This is New Milford, Pennsylvania on an unseasonably warm February day. Today, a family-operated maple syrup business and volunteers are awaiting a tree cutting crew to clear cut the trees to make room for a natural gas pipeline. The Constitution Pipeline, a joint venture between Williams Partners and Cabot Oil and Gas has applied for and received eminent domain status from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. This means that the companies can take the land against the owner's will, and that is exactly what's happening here. The Holleran family will receive some settlement determined by a judge at a later date, but they'd rather keep the land the way it is today, a working and productive maple syrup operation. My name is Megan Holleran. Um, our family business is North Hartford Maple, and I'm a field technician um, tree tapper, and I make the candy. The Constitution Pipeline is a 124-mile um, natural gas pipeline. Um, it's being built by Cabot and Williams. It's uh, running from near the Montrose area in Pennsylvania to um, near Albany, New York. The tree cutting for this pipeline will render the remaining maple trees here and the sugar bush that we presently have useless. This is our maple syrup operation. We came out, we spent out here for this whole week tapping trees. Um, this is one of our lines. I've got probably six or seven taps on this line, six or seven different trees tapped. Each of those will produce about a quart of syrup a year. And this line runs down from the top of the hill and drops right down into this bucket where we're collecting a good bit of sap today. It's running pretty well. Right now we're boiling over a fire. Um, normally for our business we would put them into our evaporator, which does it a lot faster, but um, right now we've got a, a fire going. We put them into a, into a big boiling bucket and as it gets down towards about the right um, consistency for syrup, we put it into a small finishing pan, boil it down to the right temperature, filter it, you know, make sure there's nothing, there's nothing in there that shouldn't be, and then uh, you know, use it. Make it into candy or sugar or um, maple cream, maple butter, or we can just you know, go ahead and pour it on pancakes. We're also uh, also here, of course, um, to support. We're you know trying to stop this pipeline from being built and protesting the usage of eminent domain on our property. As far as we're concerned, this this land is still ours and it still belongs to us. And so we're out here to 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 try to convince the pipeline to try to find a, a better way to handle this situation than coming through here and cutting our trees without our permission. What's happening to Megan could happen to anybody. And it's just a crapshoot because the fossil fuel guys kind of own the government. So it breaks my heart because I know if this happened to me, I'd be beside myself. I don't know what I would do. Uh, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, yeah. and we're here to support yeah. everybody that's fighting these, these proposals and projects that are unneeded. What brings you here today? Um, we're fighting a similar battle in Lancaster County. Um, I happen to be an affected landowner there as well that proposed Atlantic Sunrise route will bisect my 20 acre farm um, into two 10 acre tracks, one with no access from anywhere. Um, we're a little further behind in the flight fight than you guys. We're expecting to hear in March whether or not FERC approves and we are just offering as much support as we possibly can because at the end of the day we're all in this together. You know, it's just one more instance in our area of the gas companies being so arrogant and um, just thinking they can take and take and take from the people and some people may want it but others don't and this this family doesn't want the pipeline coming through their property and I mean you know cutting down all their maple trees they're making syrup but you know sap right now. I've lived in this area my whole life and my parents as, as have my parents and most of my family um, and hope to continue living here for the rest of it and when I was a kid we used to come out here to this property which my, was my grandparents and where my parents my mother grew up and we would come out here and we could we could play in this road and never worry about a car hitting us. And I, I hardly even knew it was a road when I was a kid. And now a, a water truck runs past every 20 minutes. And the, and even, not, even not the water trucks, construction trucks, um, you know, just industry-related traffic um, 
it's through here all the time, constantly, day and night, 24/7, and and every five or ten minutes, and and that's something that we've never we had never had to deal with before out here. We have a, a very nice lakefront property here, and and it, there were no motors on the lake. It was peaceful and pleasant, and. Um, mostly what you hear now is, is water trucks coming through or, um, and not so much on this property, but in the area, compressor stations, um, you know, the drilling, um, from the, from the well pads. Uh, there was a good portion of time where we saw flaring everywhere we went. Um, and it's, it's become industrialized and, and no one that lived here ever intended to live in an industrialized area. It's it's completely changed, um, and you can see the effects of it, of the effects of it in everything, in just the number of well pads, access roads that are you know bigger than any driveway or road that we'd ever seen before, um, pipelines crisscrossing everywhere, gathering lines, pipelines, connecting lines, just everywhere, and you know, in the increase in traffic, the increase in, in people, um, and we know which is an economic stimulus, I suppose, but is is also changing the culture here. Um, you know, bringing in, in bringing in people from out of state for work, and which is is just changing a lot of uh, a lot of the the relations between people and the way that people treat each other here. Where you know we're used to dealing with people who have a a sense of connection to the area, and um, you know who or who moved here from somewhere else moved here for a reason, and because they they liked it, and now it's uh, it's you, you you can't expect that anymore, and. Especially with the industry ripping neighbors apart, you know, and nip it, and, and ripping apart communities, um, because everyone's got it, you know, everyone's on a different side, and there's money involved, and there's property rights involved, and I didn't even know where our property lines were when I was a kid, because it didn't matter, and and now it does. Now everyone has to know this is my side, this is your side. I can do what I want with my side, and you can do what you want with your side, and I don't care how it affects you, and and mm -hmm. and it's it's become a very different climate and culture, and a di very different place to live. A growing movement of volunteers is setting up camp here to bring awareness and support to this unfortunate situation. And they are starting to get a lot of media attention. Yeah, I'm from Bloomfield, New Jersey. It took two and a quarter hours to get here. And we'll be here all day and maybe through the night. And the reason we're here, my husband and I, is that we feel that the gas companies are uh, destroying communities across the United States and we are fighting Williams Transco in New Jersey because they have in now in built a compressor station that is pushing more gas through a 60 year old pipeline and we feel that, that that's an incredible danger of leaks, explosions and fires and seven towns have passed resolutions saying they didn't want the uh, uh, pressure increase that they wanted to have a health study done and then nothing was done. I would love to have things go back to the way they were before the industry came into the area. And it's a complicated issue. It's not that simple. And, uh, and I, I do recognize some of the benefits of that we have that, you know, that are part of, part of having an industry come in, you know, come in and, and there are, there are benefits, but, but not, not anything that's near enough to make up for, um, for all the, the negative impacts that we've had. They didn't, they didn't give me much information, but I've met these guys before. They're perfectly nice, and uh, hopefully we won't. That doesn't mean we'll be seeing anybody out here today, but uh, it's not looking real good. A win for the family fighting to save its trees in Susquehanna County. A group of friends and other protesters were able to turn away crews who came to cut down those trees on the Holleran family <laughs> land near New Milford yesterday. Now, they've been waiting for days, hoping to stop a company from cutting the trees the family uses to make its maple syrup. The trees need to come down to make way for a natural gas pipeline, but when workers with chainsaws showed up yesterday, there was a discussion and they left. The pipeline company tells Newswatch 16 this is only a temporary reprieve for the Holleran land. They say that land is a vital part of the pipeline that will ship natural gas in Susquehanna County to New York and New England.